That's our road. <clears throat> That's our emergency easement. <clears throat> Very little slope and just a half mile to the county road and illegally gated in two places by the L77 Ranch. Knowingly, willfully breaching duty of care. Addenda A, never to be gated. Remington Road goes from Lyle Snowden to McGowan with the last half a mile only for emergency access if for any reason Lyle Snowden cannot be accessed. Our entrance to Lyle Snowden uh, is very steep and it has a natural spring under it. In much deeper snow and ice. Four and a half feet of snow, days of freezing rain. Snow over the gates and ice cake just, you know, sealed the deal. Is at the lower part of our driveway. On the other side of our driveway, that year, willfully and intentionally, the Little 7 7 Ranch, Mary Cleggie, John Stroyer, Shauna Timberland, and Tim Kars plowed. A 10 foot high snow berm, full width of the road. My husband was completely bermed in. He's 86 now, so he was 80 then. I was nine days in the hospital. He was distraught. When I got out of the hospital, a friend took four hours to make the 45 minute drive from the Dalles to up above Lyle between Appleton and Snowden. She couldn't get up from Lyle Snowden and I insisted that she drop me off on McGowan and I threw my hospital bag over that big mound crawled over the gate mound massive frozen four and a half feet of snow probably two inches ice caked and I drug my hospital bag up to their next set of illegal gates same thing and I walked home during the week I broke my foot we can't, we didn't, we can't incur more costs of an ambulance. We don't need an ambulance for a broken foot, but I needed medical care. I put snowshoes on Norm. Now to wainscoting and duct tape made little 
cross country skis for myself. And I made it, Norm couldn't make it, but I made it up over the 10 foot high mound, full width of the road at Elizabeth and Greg's driveway that every night when they came home, their headlights went across. On the other side of the road, Shanna, who with Tim, put that mound there. I called Tim, told him the situation. The pleading became screaming of why I've talked to you. I've seen Norm fall on the ice five times, Tim. I thought he was your friend. There's this haunting part of it. The tone of voice and everything. Oh, call Mary. We've been out for hours by now. About 20 minutes. I got the point and I called 911. Took me a long time to get up here, but they got here. The ambulance could not get up Remington Road from Lyle Snowden. And of course, they couldn't get there from McGowan because we weren't allowed, you know, to have access to our emergency easement. A police car did get in, got me in the back of the car. That was the very first time I was in the back of a Click Attack County Sheriff's car, helping me. I later read the report and there's commentary about us not paying for snow plowing. That's not accurate at all. That year they chose to not ask us. Another comment in the police report is I overheard her say as they were putting her into the ambulance that she was dancing as if that's a derogatory thing. Yep. I broke my foot dancing to so happy. At Lyle Snowden and Remington intersection at the Yellow Gate, the ambulance waited. Doors wide open, freezing fog. And in a safety caravan, as I'm being put in the back of the ambulance and my husband is on the other side of that berm, stranded between frozen, locked gates on a road that if you own the property, you agreed that it's never to be gated. So here comes the safety caravan. Elizabeth and Greg, Shauna and Travis. All their lights shined across. By now, you know, it's melted quite a bit and uh, they're able to get up the hill just like the cop did. Not one person called, texted, or emailed to see if Norm was okay. I clearly couldn't get home that night. Luckily, there was a break in the weather the next morning. That night, a person from, from the Dalles 
water bureau drove me home from MCMC to my husband's shop at the blue building in Lyle where before he got his cancer that's where you know the jerky and the cheeses and the fudge and the little gift shop and me next door now where the gun shop is of Tim and Debbie as a wholesale nationwide representative for Azure Standard for their natural and organic foods. Just something ironic about that, isn't it? With every U-Haul blanket he had in it, concrete floor I slept or I attempted to sleep that night I don't know how Norm dug his way out but he dug his way out for, through that mound and he got me home at the end of this week A process server risked his life. It took him three times to get to our door because Mary Kleige and John Stroyer, the Little 7 7 Ranch, and Calvert and Eaton Company willfully choose to violate our community and us personally because they don't want to have cattle guards over an emergency easement. They served us with pictures of my footprints in the snow. Little notes on it like clearly they must have had a key. Clearly the prints go up to the Duncan's driveway. I don't know what a, they think a key would do when it was two feet under snow and ice. From 7 2014 until this day, just before the new year of. 2022 there have been illegal gates chained and locked on the emergency easement approved by Quick Attack County DNR Department of Ecology local tribes PUD sheriffs Appleton Fire District. Wildland Fire Country. Former State Forest. Traded off to timber companies. To be purchased. for Pleasure and Profit Ranch. That it's unsafe to put cattle guards on a half a mile section of road. Remember the wildland fire season of 2020? I was out taking a picture of the moon before bed and on video caught the fur fire start. That was the first one of the season. I literally that year 
three i've never i've, I've witnessed a lot of wildfire up here but not the start of them that year 2020 i witnessed three of them start the fur fire the seven mile fire and the Mosier Creek fire. And I knew I had to again try to address for permanent resolution of these dangerous illegal gates. And I asked Mary to come down and have a discussion, which because of my PTSD, and because of my multiple concussions, I recorded it with her permission to share with Norm and to share back with her. And something about the end of the conversation was, if you were wrong, would you consider doing something different? September 2020 to December 2021. I I guess I I keep thinking I'm gonna get get her answer. Apparently I'm a little thick on that one. I've gotten the answer. Next morning after that gate discussion, Deputy Wilkes, Kuktak County Sheriff's Department, while I'm sleeping in the house, in a open windows, open doors, no call out, no n nothing, walks in my back door, through my laundry room, around past the kitchen, around past the dining room table, around past the fireplace, and is standing next to my bed and wants to know what my intentions are with the gates. I stood up and escorted her out of the house and had the most reasonable conversation that I could. She offered me Commissioner Sauter's number. I later learned in August of 2021 when I was in court facing a year in jail for contempt of court on a restraining order I did not break. A restraining order that should have never been put on me. I learned that Mary had given instructions to all her employees to contact her whenever I was seen. Not, not on her property. Just anywhere around here. December 2020. Judge Baker put a restraining order on me and suggested we maybe leave the area for a while. We went homeless last year. met a lot of good people. <laughs> Between September 2020 and March 2021, I did nothing illegal in prayerful protest that when encountered with phenomenal disrespect and escalation just under 30 just under 30
30 encounters with the Click Attack County Sheriff's Department because of Mary Cleggie and John Stroyer of the Little 7 7 Ranch and Calvert and Eaton Company. I was provoked into a psychotic break. I was seeking counseling. There was no counseling to be had when you're $70 over Medicaid and Medicare. But miraculously, it became available. after on what the public, the community, the taxpayers support. Comprehensive health and their psychiatric hospitals. The day I was trying to get to the doctor, I had been up here with my car not starting for two weeks. And there was a fire in the motorhome and the house was too cold to stay in. We already had an experience in December where I had hypothermia and I had called 911. The tire had blown out, power was off, lighter went out, flashlight went out. I called 911 and they said that a welfare check and emergency transport was on the way. I can't even go into that now, but the ending is right where I'm parked. I found out later after they abandoned me. There were three cop cars, a fire truck, and an ambulance here. And they left me here. And when I did get off the hill at 3 o'clock in the morning and got to where my husband had the RV at Peach Beach, the help of wall gap. Thanks for that donation, Mary. The Click Attack County Sheriff's Department came and forced me into their vehicle. Would not stop for a lighter and brought me back here. Before they pulled up my driveway, they interrogated me and patted me down about booby traps. Because I had booby traps against my neighbors and the police. You know what that was? It's my granddaughter Hope's old bed frame from when she was a little girl. Little wooden spooled painted blue with the driveway cable through it that said, do not enter including Click Attack County Sheriff's Department. Later, they rode, drove over it and broke it to pieces. That day when I finally broke, Me and Janice Joplin cranked up. All the windows down, screaming. Take another little piece of my heart now, baby. Screaming. I 
I later learned in court that Mary had been alerted that I was having a major problem. And she alerted her staff, rightfully so, cool. So I'm leaving here, me and Janice Joplin. And I got my windows down and I'm flipping off the universe. And dang it. There's the bunkhouse worker on the driveway. Oh no, they're gonna think I'm, I'm flipping them off. I stop at the sawmill, the T of Remington and Titan, little seven seven sawmill. I happen to have signs with me. There were um, like legal sized cardstock I'd been writing and drawing on, trying to cope. I was gonna show it to my doctor. One said kindness matters. The other one was armed only with prayer because that's what I would put up for the sheriff's department. The bunkhouse worker pulled up to the side of my car, could go around me in three different ways, and videoed me. I opened my door and I got down on my knees trying to not be a threat. But when you got a crazy ass woman with a psychotic break, scream and take another little piece of my heart now, baby, it's probably pretty unsettling. She left as I followed going down the hill to the doctor and Benjamin. She pulled off to the side I was going to pass her. All I can assume is that she was afraid and she made a judgment that didn't work out so well for me because she drug me 50 feet through the ditch. Snow. Oh, I, I, I mean, di you know, up, up along my windows. And I, and I kind of spun out behind her and she was in front of me so I had to keep following her down the hill because going down the gallon and uh see the ranch manager coming toward me when we go down the dip just before Raz's the whole place and I think oh my god now he thinks I'm after her and so I stop just beyond Raz's driveway. And I suddenly have three cars around me because I didn't know this. But it turns out like 9, 930, they all meet up for the day's duties on the ranch. And uh, I again thought I was explaining, but apparently I was still screaming. And I hear, here comes Mary. And I, my whole being also hears in my head, Judge Baker, if you see Mary anywhere in the universe, you run 150 feet. I ran to my car. This is my perception during a psychotic break. And it turns out the testimony of people in court representing, you know, witnesses for the L77. They took a video of me running to my car and leaving as fast as I could. Good job, prosecutor. Might want to think how you're spending the taxpayer's dollars. Get down the hill, go to Ken's Automotive, make sure the car's okay, because 
20 something. Um, go to the doctor, and I'm so. I have to report. I'm terrified of the Cook Tech County Sheriff's Department because of their behavior. I have now, I don't know it, but I've been provoked into a psychotic break. I go to the White Salmon Police and the wonderful advocate from Wagap stood with me. And waited because it had to be the Cook County, County Sheriff's Department to address me. I wanted to report that there had been an encounter with the ranch employees, and I was terrified. Turns out they were already looking for me, they'd already made their judgments. Remember the last part of that conversation? Told him, I told him everything that had happened. And then they told me that I'm on video being around Mary and yelling at Barry and not leaving. The click of those handcuffs after I say the truth will prevail. Nine. Days incarcerated. Laying under a bench in the booking area in Golden Dale. Just like in the movies where the counselor comes to the door but can't come in, a little metal chair. Tell me it's okay, Sandra. You know, it's just gonna be okay. You're, you're, you're gonna get through this. Now just, just try to be calm and try to eat. And suddenly, the lead woman at the jail throws a blue ripped up vinyl mat over his head to, onto me. I already have a mat in there. Later, she told me it was because of my arthritis. It was to help me. It was the same ripped up blue mat that couldn't be sanitized in COVID times that every single person I saw go by that little window out of the cell was carrying. The booking counter, the size of maybe 10 by 10 inside, six people, shoulder to shoulder, chest to back, no mass, no sanitation. Every single person that touches that counter where you stand to do your court hearings over the phone, every delivery, Never sanitized once. Never sanitized once. I rolled up the mat, said I didn't want it. The counselor left because he could see this wasn't, you know, there's nothing he could do. I would think it was probably about three hours. I was refused medication and food until I accepted that mat. I accepted that mat by cramming that fucker as deep as I could into that toilet and trying to make a place flood. I wanted to make sure nobody would ever use that mat again. That sure got written up different than it really happened.
I made a huge mistake. Never been arrested before. Right there, up there. 11.7. I'd gone into a blackout while on the phone side for court away. when I was hearing the things that were being said. And I was released for the court date. And I went out from that jail an outrage over Sheriff Songer who said he would help me. And I pounded on the courthouse doors and opened my big old mouth, big old heart, and open arms and yelled to the sky. Natural law wins over man's laws, motherfuckers. And Sheriff Songer, I'll do everything I can to get you out of office. Within minutes, I'm being chased down in my little pink sweater. Put in a different cell with the hole in the center. And I start chanting, oh, happy day. You get a really good chant going on in that echo chamber. And the five point cuff system, chain around the waist, handcuffs on my damaged and our arthritic wrists and my ankles. I'm put in the side of a box van in a stainless steel chair. Metal surrounding. Taking the short distance to the Quick Tech County Hospital up there that seems to have quite a little system. I'm heading to Sela. Two and a half hour drive in a t-shirt and sweatpants. And what do I do as an act of rebellion and of acknowledgement of what it must be like for a dog when it gets picked up? And I barked all the fucking way to Sela just because they could hear me. Dispatch was like, what's that? Oh, Sandra's barking. So I have PTSD. I've been provoked into a psychotic break. And I'm being told I have Oh, this variety of mental illnesses. Doesn't matter what I say or try to explain, doesn't matter. Here's a sickening thing. In the nurse's station, taped up on the piece of copy paper up on the cabinet above their desk where they dispense, is at the heading is wish list and all the tiny hard work side drugs just for those pharmaceutical reps so I'm, as I'm getting one of my counseling session in the center of kitchen area with everybody I'm being told that you need to take these medicines these are the mental illnesses you have and if you put us in the position of making us restrain you and enforce it upon you 
she leans in. I will make sure you go to Eastern for a long time. I said, okay. I need to think about that. I excuse myself to the bathroom. With my little bendy pin, because I was too unsafe to have a real pin. Capital I across my forehead. Broken heart tears down the right side of my cheek. Down the left side was submit. So with that blue ink on my face, I walked up to that bitch. Misdiagnosing and abusing. I opened up those big arms, big heart and mouth again and said, I submit. You do whatever you feel you need to do so I can go home. Legally, she couldn't keep me longer. They took me down on the floor, crawling. Trying to figure out what the ceiling is. They had really no real activities to do. But they, they had, I don't have a television in my home. They, they had these massive big screen TVs and they would play YouTube. Well, dancing is my medicine. You know, it's okay to walk the halls day and night in this chain of people in this bizarro oval. But because I would dance, I'd go to every class, every session, meals, shower, did everything I was supposed to do. But I would dance as much as I could until they brought me down where I could not walk. I let her read the reports about that. The sickness that showed. That's as much as I can do for now. Except for one last thing is thank God and myself that I had my husband's phone on me when I got arrested. Because apparently, in a psychotic state, I still knew they hit voice memo. I just didn't know it until two weeks before trial. And I found this recording. Oh my gosh. Eric Anderson, that many years on the force. Claiming I was fine, yet the opposite, the good old talk out of both sides of your mouth, his written statements, and his statement on the stand about how I had admitted, and the reason it turns out I was arrested is because I had agreed with that I had been around Mary yelling at her and didn't leave immediately. Robert Gower, 
phenomenal defense attorney, public defender that came out of Portland, that used to be up in Wenatchee. Awesome man. Says to Deputy Eric Anderson on the stand, would you be surprised if Sandra had a recording? His mouth said no, his body language said differently. What's called impeachment evidence. Apparently you don't have to submit it to the prosecutor. I didn't even know about it till two weeks prior. There is no justice. There is no justice. But truth prevailed. And as that silent courtroom listened to that me, that woman clearly, deeply troubled and in crisis, asking for help and explaining what happened. listens to the final me saying that's bullshit truth will prevail in the click of the cuffs up to a year in jail because when I was over there trying to explain myself, Mary Cleggy of the Little Seven Seven Ranch, so afraid of the dangerous Sandra Colleen, drove two and a half miles, no, already alerted that I was in distress and approached me without me realizing it because when I heard, here comes Mary, I got the hell out of there. Apparently not fast enough though for anybody's liking. More use of taxpayer dollars. As I sit here, I've had much healing. I understand how I added to my own trauma. And I understand I will never make that poison again and feed it to myself from that wicked Mary and John of the Little Seven Seven Ranch. So the answer is only with a court order will they remove their illegal gates that have blocked fire suppression and emergency responders and PUD since 7 2014. And I have not been able to afford a lawyer or find one even and not score for the retired people and not Northwest justice for the poor people. They'd like to help. I'm told they don't have the bandwidth to enforce a document that literally says never to be gated. <sighs> Looks like I'll have to take that answer of only a court order and half of my monthly income 
to file and then to put myself through more trauma and stress to represent myself in court against the little seven seven ranch mary Craigie, and calvert and eaton company john destroyer hypocrite If they did right, it's a half a mile minimal slope to the county road.